If you're planning on taking real analysis this semester, or maybe you've already started, then I strongly recommend watching this video until the very end so you can learn all the things I wish I knew before I took real analysis because no one ever really told me these things before I got into it. When you decide in college that you want to be a math major, one of the very first quote, real math classes you take is real analysis. It's one of the first rigorous, proof-based, abstract, awesome, doodah math classes that you will take in your mathematics career. And these are the things that no one ever told me. The very first is that even though real analysis is the same topics as calculus. You really, you study the same theorems, the same ideas. It is totally different than calculus. And this is really the first big roadblock that many students hit when they take their first math major classes. Many math majors, they love calculus. They take calculus, you know, it's like high school. They do algebra and factoring and derivatives and integrals and formulas and plugging things in. It's almost like solving a little puzzle. And they love that. They decide to be a math major. And maybe they even take an introductory proof class. But really, real analysis seems to be like a roadblock just because it feels so different. Even though it is calculus, I mean, it really is the same theorems. It's totally different. You have to attack it with a totally different mindset. It's not just formulas anymore. It's not just plug and chug anymore. It is a theoretic, rigorous, logic-based proof math class. It's one of the big three areas of mathematics and your professor will treat it as such. So the first thing is just to get it out of your mind. You're not in the realm of calculus anymore necessarily. It's a different level. The second thing that I really wish I knew was I wish I knew all of the general proof techniques uh, that you would be using. Now, depending on uh, where you take it, depending on where that lies in your uh, degree, you may already know many of the proof techniques or you may even be taught them in class as you're going. But when I say proof techniques, I'm talking about things like mathematical induction, you know, uh, mutual inclusion, if you're, if you're talking about when sets are are equivalent, uh, just proof by cases, you know, all the kind of general ways you prove things, depending on which real analysis class you take, these might be assumed knowledge. Your professor might just think, hey, uh, we're just going to start using these proofs. They know it already. They're math majors. Um, you should know how to prove things. At least for me, real analysis was the second proof class I ever took. And uh, some of it, I knew the proof techniques and, and many I didn't. I was very unfamiliar with just using definitions to prove things. In fact, I was just unfamiliar with how to write mathematical proofs in general and just kind of having a general idea of how proofs work. That's really going to give you a leg up. That's something I really wish I knew how to do at least a little bit more going into my real analysis class. Number three. And this really goes along with any math proof class. You have to understand how important definitions are. You sort of think definitions are uh, definitions, but when you become a math major and you start doing math proofs, and especially in real analysis, it seems like it's the first time this matters more than anything, is that you have to know these definitions cold. When I say a sequence converges, what does that mean? What does that really mean if a sequence converges to a limit L? You have to be very specific and very exact because these definitions show up in like every single proof you do. And if you don't know definitions and you can't write the exact definitions, then you can't finish the proof. You can't solve the problem and you're going to get points taken off. So what happens a lot of times is students may, may prove it correctly, may do the problem, sort of, but they don't write it in terms of the definition. So what that means is they're not really saying what the professor wants them to say. When your professor writes definition, like alarm bells should go off in your head, this is important. Usually definitions are used to prove things, right? Proving things comes down to knowing the definition. I had an instructor, his joke was, do you know the definition of a definition? It's something which you know by heart. That was what a definition was to him. 
Now the fourth thing I wish I knew going into real analysis is how to use definitions in proofs. Many proofs, especially in real analysis and math all over, they work essentially like this. If you're given a problem, you usually have some information, you have some assumptions, and then there's something you'd like to show based on those. And so here's a very nice way you can prove things. You write the definition of what you know, and then you might think you just attack the problem and that's fine, but one way to do it is write what you know in terms of its definition and write what you want. Write the answer in terms of its definition. And then you try to sort of just link these things up. It's a really nice way of doing things. And actually, just writing the definition of the assumptions and the conclusion, that's like half of the points almost right there anyway. All the points you're missing is just the idea that links these two things up. And so if you kind of like sandwich the problem, you kind of start at the end and the beginning, it, it makes problems a lot easier if you don't quite remember how to do them. So that's a really nice technique that I wish I knew going into real analysis. The fifth thing I really wish I knew was how important the logical quantifiers and all of the uh, math things, all the math terms were. So the little symbols, the little symbols that look like um, this, right? If you've seen that symbol, so this is like the is an element of. So if I said little a, this symbol capital A, this means that little a is an element of the set capital A. So just, just things like that, little notational things become incredibly important in classes like real analysis. And depending on which professor you have, these might be taken for granted. So my recommendation with this is really to maybe take an introductory proof class before real analysis rather than jumping right in, just so you can learn all of these little notational things, these quantifiers as they're called, and also the introductory proof techniques which I discussed before. And the final thing, the final thing I wish I knew before taking real analysis is that persistence is key. <laughs> the most important thing, especially with all these higher level math classes, if you want to do well, you have to persist. You have to stick with it. You gotta, you gotta access that gritty part of yourself because these courses, you know, they're not always easy. They're very abstract and the ideas are gonna be new to you. They're going to be new ideas and are going to be hard to get your eye, your head around them. And, oh man, I remember, I remember doing this and I remember staring at the board and not understanding it. And it's like the concepts just don't click. And I would practice and it doesn't click and I'd practice and it doesn't click. And then I'd practice and, ah, oh, finally starting to have some breakthrough moments. I personally believe, you don't have to agree with me, but I think like 90% of a math degree is just straight not giving up, just straight persisting and trying and failing and not understanding and trying again. And then you finally get it. Your brain finally adjusts and everything is kind of cohesive. So that's the last thing I really wish I knew going into real analysis is that you just have to keep on going, keep persisting, keep practicing and don't give up. So those are just the top things that were on my mind today. I hope you enjoyed them, and if you're going to take real analysis, I wish you the best of luck. Have a great day.